OSPF can be configured in a few different places. Now at first glance, this looks like we're configuring for OSPF v3. However, this is an advanced OSPF config you should be aware of. Now this is really not compatible with earlier configurations, so you would do this in a new install. But this advanced OSPF config that we're seeing says, hey, you know what? I can be for v4 and v6. And it works really similar to the way that BGP, specifically multi-protocol BGP works. So you can do the exact same thing. You can have address families. Now, address family says, I want to speak about routes inside of this protocol space. So when I say address family at PV6 unicast says, I want to advertise or affect uh, IPv6 routing information. And in this case, we're just doing auto cost reference bandwidth. But I could also say, oh, this same process is going to be enabled for IPv4 OSPF routing. It's wild and wacky, but be aware that really all the same operation happens, all the same operation exists, but the configuration is fundamentally different. And you can see here that we could also simultaneously enable this interface for v4 and v6. It's a really elegant config that you should be aware of for a certification, but more importantly for the real world. Certification is going to hammer you on this. That's not the idea. But it is, you know, it's fair game. It's uh, relevant uh, from the uh, exam outline. And in the real world, this is very elegant. And it would be a good way to go if you are preparing for uh, dual routing protocols for v4 and v6. It's a good config. Now, if you are working with advanced OSPF v3, which is where we have those address families, bear in mind, no longer are you going to be doing show IPv6 OSPF, show IPv6 interface brief, all those things. If you're using advanced OSPF v3, then you're going to do show OSPF v3. That's how to troubleshoot that, okay? So maybe, maybe a little counterintuitive, maybe you don't wanna make this leap just yet, but it is good to know where those show commands live.